Tenakoto Katoa. I feel very privileged to become a fellow of the Royal Society of New Zealand, and I hope I can make a meaningful contribution to the Society's work locally and internationally. I'd like to talk about our tuberculosis research. TB is the biggest infectious disease killer of humans outside of pandemics and is responsible for up to a million deaths per year, largely in under-resourced populations. My research journey started in 2001 when Marion and Nathan and I arrived in the Gambia in West Africa, where we were based for six years. I'd like to acknowledge them along with our daughters, Rebecca and Danielle. I'd also like to acknowledge the MRC unit and the people of the Gambia. These pictures show the main campus of the MRC unit, which employs around 700 staff, the River Gambia on the right, and researchers visiting a village. The Gambia is a small country with very narrow borders, which relate to how far you could shoot from a gunboat in the middle of the river. When someone who is exposed to an aerosol from a TB case, an infection might not be established at all. We label this as the early clearance phenotype. If they do become infected, there is an interaction with the immune system that has several possible outcomes. First, there can be chronic latent infection, which is an ongoing stable standoff between the pathogen and the immune system. Second, about 5% will rapidly progress through infection to symptomatic disease over a few months. Third, about 5% may progress the disease at some stage in the future, a reactivation phenotype. And fourth, a proportion may clear their infection, a delayed clearance phenotype. When I went to the Gambia, I led a TB case contact research platform. At its core, this involves recruiting about 300 TB cases and 2,000 household contacts, and then following them for two years, carefully documenting changes in phenotype and obtaining information and samples to conduct multidisciplinary research projects to understand what is going on. Here, those in blue being projects on cases such as diagnosis of disease, risk factors for disease and drug resistance, while those fully or partially in green are projects on contacts such as the effects of case strain on outcomes, how to diagnose infection and assessing immune responses. This is a picture of a Gambian house on a compound. People sleep in the same or a different room to each other or a different house on the same compound. And a previous study showed that the likelihood of be being positive on a test for infection changed according to where people sleep in relation to a TB case. We use this exposure gradient by sleeping proximity to a case to create a reproducible human model for evaluating new tests for TB infection. Here we show the percentage of contacts who were test positive by either of two T cell based tests and the traditional tuberculin skin test across the exposure gradient. With follow up of contacts, we also studied the likelihood of progression to disease in relation to the original test results and how long a positive test results would last. We also found that about a third of TB cases in the Gambia are due to the M. africanum strain, which is not spread well across the other parts of the world. Here we looked at the likelihood of contacts progressing to disease in relation to the strain of M. tuberculosis that they were exposed to. Using M. africanum as the reference, we found that all the other strains had higher relative risks of progression. This was the first time that differences in disease progression by strain had been shown. In 2008, I took up the Macaulay chair at Otago, endowed by Mercy Hospital Dunedin. I've been privileged to work with the TB group at the, at the University of Pajajaran in West Africa, along with Prof Reinout's group in the Netherlands ever since. Here are many of the group at a retreat in Sumatra 
and the map on the right shows the location of Bandung and the picture, the city from the surrounding hills. This slide shows the results of detailed interviews of over 400 TB patients diagnosed in both public and private sector clinics in Bandung. Each graph shows the cumulative percentage of patients with the correct diagnosis, with the number of consecutive visits to a provider on the x-axis. The segmented columns describe what patients went to each different type of provider, but we haven't got time to go into those. Following the black lines, you can see that half the patients were still not diagnosed after around six visits to various providers. In Indonesia, when children, children under five are a TB case contact, they are assessed for TB and if negative, they should start preventive treatment. Here we found that only 34 of over 400 contacts were brought back for screening. We also found that few were started on preventive treatment. To explore this further, we conducted a public health evaluation, breaking the system down into parameters on the left and developing performance indicators. Here are just some of the parameters that we assessed. And for each indicator, you can see over on the right that we set a target performance and measured observed performance and then calculated the gap on the far right between them. The next steps after this were to work out how to close each gap. We also set up a case contact study platform in Indonesia, focused specifically on the early clearance phenotype. 1,400 contacts of 200 highly infectious TB cases were recruited. Those who were negative for a test for infection had a second test after three months. Those who were negative again, the persistently negative, were labelled labeled early clearers and were compared with those who became test positive using a whole series of evaluations, which are shown down the bottom. As shown on this table with the red dots, we found that contacts who were BCG vaccinated were much less likely to undergo test conversion. The relative risk of test conversion was 0.55 for BCG vaccination, suggesting 45% protection. We also identified two limitations of this protection. Protection waned with increasing age, with no evidence of protection by the age of about 30. And we also developed a validated pathogen exposure score, a little bit like what we showed you from the Gambia, and found that as exposure to the pathogen increased, BCG protection reduced, suggesting it can be overcome by high infecting dose of the pathogen. Using whole genome sequencing, we constructed a phylogenetic tree of M. tuberculosis isolates from the Indonesian TB cases. The gray and the blue shaded areas show that Beijing strains are responsible for, out, for about 40% of cases in Bandung. We then looked at protection from BCG against infection according to whether contacts were exposed to a Beijing or a non-Beijing strain. We found that a 60% reduction in the risk of infection in, in BCG vaccination contacts exposed to a non-Beijing uh, strain. But for BCG vaccinated contacts exposed to a, B, uh, a Beijing strain, the relative, reduce was, uh, the relative risk was not reduced at all. This was the first evidence in human TB contacts that Beijing strains can evade BCG protection against infection. The picture here on the left shows how we're utilizing our sample bioarchive to provide new insights into the early clearance phenotype using genomics, transcriptomics, metabolomics and proteomics alongside micronutrient measurements, flow cytometry, ex vivo cytokine and antibody analyses. And over on the right, Joe Kerman's group at Otago have shown that BCG vaccination leads to different innate cell responses in the lungs of mice challenged with M. tuberculosis compared to unvaccinated mice. Following on from our observation in, in Indonesia,
Jo is now leading a Martin funded project using her lung model in mice to test the hypothesis that the Beijing strains are able to evade BCG induced innate immunity. I'd like to thank, uh, finish by acknowledging all the different people that have been involved in our studies and the funders as well that have made it possible. And without both the people and the funders, I would not be standing before you today. Thank you very much.